Until now, we have seen various examples that show how to use GDB to debug uh, applications and then find the, the code or instructions that are causing the bugs. Uh, however, GDB is not so effective uh, when it is used to track down the bugs in the heap space. There are a class of tools, a category of tools called memory profiling tools or heap profiling tools, which are very useful and handy to trace bugs if they happen because of heap violations. For instance, look at this particular example. Here, I've got a simple program with a function called a buggy function. This particular buggy function allocates, allocates memory using malloc, which usually is around 16 bytes of memory. And then the start address of that is being stored into one pointer. This particular loop iterates for six, and then it tries to initialize each of those four byte region with a value. If you observe the loop carefully, the last iteration will cause an overrun violation because the size allocated is 16 bytes and then the iterations are five. So the last iteration would obviously cause an overrun. Let's try and run this without any debug support. Let's try and first build this. So it's got compile. Let's run this. When it is run normally, it doesn't show up the bug. You can see here, there is no segmentation violation and there is no bug reported. In fact, the application actually is violating the upper boundary of the heap space allocated. Let's try and use GDB and see if GDB can trace this particular error. Let's use GDB, GDB with overrun. Let's set a breakpoint straight at main function. So breakpoint is now set with main. Let's run. So we are in the main function's first instruction, which is a function call. Let's step. We are in the function. We are about to execute malloc. We are stepping into the loop now, the first iteration, plus plus, second iteration, plus plus, third iteration, plus plus, fourth iteration, plus plus, fifth iteration, and this is where the problem should happen because we have allocated 16 bytes of heap space and already we have done with the four iterations, it means we have initialized all the 15 bytes. Now, 16th byte, the highest, by, highest address in the 16th byte is the upper boundary. And now with this iteration, we are trying to write a value above that upper boundary. So, step this line or this instruction should have caused violation. Let's see if GDB reports it. As you can see, GDB doesn't show up there. And if you just keep stepping forward, you can see here the program exited normally. So if a bug happens to exist because of heap memory violation, there is a high possibility that GDB may not report an error, or the application when executed may not report the error. Now here, these tools called memory debug tools are quite handy. Let's pick up one of the tools, but before that I'll just show you a list of tools available. There are lots of tools available for profiling memory usage and debugging heap uh, violations. Most of these tools, few of them are open source and few of them are proprietary. The widely used tool by C, C++ developers, a proprietary tool called Purify. There are also open source equivalents, like a debug malloc library, which implements its own version of malloc in Kalloc. So you could link with this particular library, replacing the libc standard versions of malloc in Kalloc. The libc standard versions of malloc in Kalloc allocate more memory than you request. And that's the reason why a violation may not be traced. You can see here there's one more library called Electric Fence, again an open source library which implements malloc and Kalloc. There's a tool called memcheck, there's a tool called memdebug, and there's one package of tools called valgrind, which is again an open source. And Sentinel, which happens to be one more uh, proprietary tool. We have SmartHeap, so lots of tools exist which are specifically used for debugging the heap problems. So try and use electric fans first, and then we'll slowly look into how to use one more open source toolkit called Valgrind. So watch this. I'll take the same program, the same example that we have seen just now. What I'll do is just link with a library called eFence. eFence happens to be a library. 
So I've installed the particular library. Now all I need to do is link my application against the events library. So hyphen L events would link this particular application, malloc and killock routines from events. So now it is compiled and built. Let's run the application now. You could see a segmentation fault. Now this segmentation fault is being reported because there was a fault identified at the one time, which wasn't earlier when events wasn't linked. Let's try and generate the code file. So you limit hyphen C unlimited gives us the core file, we'll run the application all over again. So core file is dumped. Let's now use GDB and see if GDB can now help us trace that instruction that caused violation. Let's look at GDB overrun. And now we pass the core file to it. But see here, GDB straight away is being is showing up that particular line where the instruction is causing a fault. You can even run this all over again. We'll say run. You can see here it's reporting the error because core file was given as an argument. I'll just run this GDB session without the core file. We'll again set the breakpoint at main. Breakpoint is set at main function. We'll say step. So we'll say run. We are the main breakpoint. Step. Step. We are now about to enter the first iteration. Iteration 1. Iteration 2. Iteration 3. Iteration 4. Iteration 5, you can see now a segmentation fault. So this is because of the malloc and other functions, the heap allocation functions from lib events. GDB earlier was not able to trace this particular bug. So this is how standard uh, uh, tools, heap profiling tools and heap profiling libraries could help. Let's take a look at one more example. Look at this one. Uh, this is called an underworld violation. The same program that we've seen just now, the same buggy function, the same way of allocating memory of 15 bytes to the heap. And then here we are decrementing the pointer. It means we are trying to violate the lower limit. So this particular loop should violate the lower limit. Let's see again if events would help us. So without linking with lib events, there's no way out. This will not be reported to be an error. We'll first do that under run.c, under run. You can see here, when I'm running this, there's no segmentation violation, there's no fault. So let's link it with lib events, hyphen l events. You can see now it is linked with the libc, so events version of the log, the log and the the functions under run. Essence is also not showing up the segmentation fault. But this is because lib essence is configured either to look for the overruns or the underruns and not both at the same point in time. Now essence can be configured to look for the underrun problems by setting one environmental variable called EF underscore protect underscore below. Set this environmental variable here I'm setting it using command export, and then run the same example all over again. You would see events would now look for underrun problems. As I could see, segmentation fault is being reported. Now if I run my overrun, events, since it is now configured to look for the underruns, events would not report any problem, or events would not trace any overruns. So this is the limitation with this library is that it can be used either to track down the underrun violations or the overrun violations, but not both at the same point in time. Let's go ahead. The core file got created, so we'll do the same that we have done earlier. We'll use gdb space the app core file. You see this particular instruction again caused the problem because this time we're actually violating the lower limit. 
we'll look at one more example before we move into see this one uh, this is one more common mistake and one more common heap violation uh, in this particular body function we are allocating memory again we are allocating memory of size 4 bytes we are trying to initialize that with some value it's fine until here and then we are calling the free function to release that particular pointer to release that particular memory back and then we are trying to deal for the pointer uh, initialize the value now we have freed this particular uh, dynamic allocation and then we are trying to access this is usually a common mistake in most of the applications at some part of the application this dynamic memory could have been freed and later there could be a possibility some point uh, still referring to that particular memory block is being de-referred so here uh, this this could lead to a problem this leads to a memory violation let's again try and run this without support of events so GCC hyphen G check freed hyphen O check freed you can see no problem being reported there is no issue being reported so let's again do the same we'll link this time with the events you can see now the code file got dumped and then let's again do the same GDB overrun sorry check read and then the code file you could see the common mistake that line is causing the problem so this is how libraries specialized libraries like ddmalloc or essence could be used let's try and take a look at one runtime tool called valgrind valgrind is a suite of tools which are quite popular and which are used to track down heap problems and profile the memory usage of heap. eSense is a library, so eSense is not a standalone debugger, but Valgrind is a standalone debugger. Let's look at how to use Valgrind and Valgrind tools. We'll take the same example and use Valgrind on it, but before that, what we'll do, we'll compile the example all over again without any support of the eSense or without any debug symbols enabled. So we'll do that. We'll take overrun, overrun dot c. Right, so no overrun. So normal application build linked with the default libc version of the lock and lock. No libcs used, and debug symbols have not been enabled. So what we'll do now? We'll use a tool while grind. While grind can be invoked to the command line by mentioning while grind. Let's give the application overrun to it. So overrun. You could see here straight away this particular tool shows up the details of why this process failed. You can look at this. This is the PID of the process. So while going dump reports PID in all the lines. And you could see here an invalid write was detected of size 4 bytes. Now in the overrun example, actually we have an invalid write after the 16th byte upper boundary. So you can see here this particular dump also shows up this information, the address, this particular location is of zero bytes after a block of size 16 allocated. It means clearly this tool is now able to detect and report that there is an overrun and there is an overrun access. Now this particular dump shows up that particular function in which the overrun occurred. It's able to mention that this particular overrun occurred in a function called, a buggy function called by name. So this is a kind of stack trace. It is showing up main function and then main function is calling a function called buggy function. And buggy function has failed at this particular address. But buggy function was at this particular address. And the instruction that caused the violation was trying to access this region, which is outside the 16th byte. We'll again do the same with the underrun check. Let's compile the program underrun. This is the lower boundary violation. We have seen this earlier. So we are now again compiling and building it without any support from Levy events or the debug symbols. Stand will run Valgrind. Valgrind with underrun. So look at this again, invalid write, a detector of size 4 bytes, but you can see this message clearly suggests an underrun violation. Address is a 4 byte block before the size 16 allocated. You can see here, this one was saying address was 0 byte block after the size 16 allocated. 
So here is a clear indication that we are trying to violate the upper boundary of our HEPA location. And here, again, a very clear message that we are violating or the application is causing the violation of a lower boundary of the HEPA location. So while client is able to detect the underrun and overrun violations without any support of debugs involved or without any additional uh, malloc and calloc versions of debug libraries linked. What we'll do, we'll just try and take a look at what happens if we provide Wildrind with an application that has debug symbols enabled. So what I'll do is I'll again build this with hyphen G option. So hyphen G, which means we have now enabled the debug symbols. Let's run the Wildrind with this particular application executable. And this one now has debug symbols. You can see here the dump is very similar, but there is a very clear indication of the line numbers in the source file. It means if Wildrind is provided with an application executable which has debug symbols in it, then Wildrind will be able to show you the details of the lines, the source instruction lines where the bug occurred. You can see the same bug is being reported, but then we are able to get this whole detail. The main function is in this particular source file called underrun.c, and then buggy function is at uh, this particular source file underrun.c, and the instruction causing the violation is line number 8 in this particular function called buggy function. Now, line number 8, if you have to look at that particular line, obviously we need to set up a GDB session. But what, what we could do with Valgrind is one more very useful method called with a flag called hyphen hyphen db underscore attach. We'll set this to yes. Now what's this? This run, at the end of the dump, Valgrind is asking you attach a debugger. Let's say yes. So let's see what happens now. You could see here. While grind has taken you into GDB session, it means it's possible to attach a standard debugger with while grind tool. All we need to do is use this while grind flag called hyphen hyphen attach. So whenever you are to locate the source instructions that cause the bug, or whenever you are to execute the GDB commands along with the while grind tool, you could attach uh, GDB to a while grind session. What we'll do, while Ryan was reporting the line as line number 8, we'll use list command of GDB to look at that line. You can see here the list is showing up, line number 8 of buggy function, this instruction, and this is exactly the same instruction that's causing the violation. Let's use the same while Ryan now. So quit, get back into tenfold mode. Let's now use the same while Ryan to and home check freed. This one, we were actually freeing up some heap space and then we referring the same pointer. So they should actually be in valid access. Let's try and use while grind. I've enabled the debug symbols. Check freed. You can see, again, they're showing up a similar kind of zero bytes inside a block, size 4, freed. So it's, it's reporting that a pointer which is invalid is being de-referred. And then invalid write attempt is being done, and the line number is line number eight. So again, you could do the same. You can you can attach GDB, and then look through that particular source instruction. It caused a problem. So while grind is a very very useful tool when it comes to detecting bugs. It doesn't require any debug symbols to be enabled on the executable. It doesn't require any third party libraries to be linked. Look at this example. This one is a, a double C case. So, watch this a simple code. We're allocating four bytes of space using malloc, and then we are passing that particular address to a function. And the function is using that particular address to write down the value into a location, into that particular location, and then eventually freeing it up, calling free function. When this function returns, the main function again is attempting to free the same region that was already freed by the called function. So this will result in double free calls. Let's use while grind again. GCC hyphen G free error dot C hyphen O. Let's use while grind free error. You could see here an invalid free was detected. 
and then it shows up that particular line in the main function which caused the problem. And further, this is where you can actually get the complete hint about what happened. You can see here in the heat summary segment of this dump, it shows up total heap usage, one allocation of four byte size, but two frees. So it says one alloc, two frees, four bytes allocated. So this shows up the problem, and the problem happened in the function name. Let's look at one more example, this one. very similar to what we have seen earlier. This particular application takes an argument and then allocates memory of that particular size. Whatever arguments you pass, it allocates memory using malloc function of that particular size. It multiplies the size with the size of integer. And then we are trying into we are trying to write into that particular dynamic memory allocated. Uh, and this particular loop will iterate to the count of that particular size that we passes an argument. And then print numbers function is called, which will actually print back whatever data is returned using this loop into that particular dynamic memory. Let's run this with print num dot c hyphen o print num. Let's pass some hundred to it. So we are passing this hundred, which will be considered to be the size value. And internally, the code is multiplying this 100 with size of integer and allocating 400 bytes of memory. And one loop to write down into that particular 400 byte region a sequence of numbers. And there's that loop in the print function to read back those numbers. So you could see allocating 400 bytes of memory. And the first loop was able to write down all the numbers. And the second loop, the reading loop in the other function, was reading it back and no errors reported. Let's try and run. The same with while grind. So you can see the while grind dump here shows up two errors. One is the invalid write of size 4 bytes. Other one is the invalid read of size 4 bytes. Now, obviously, this is an overrun and underrun error being reported. These two are caused. The first one is caused because of the particular loop iterating for size iterations. And the second one, again, loop iterating for size iterations. In this loop, they're trying to write down beyond that allocated size. In this loop, we are trying to read from the same address beyond the allocated size. So you could see address after the block, we are trying to read. Again, address after the block, we are trying to write. Let's add debug symbols to it. Let's say hyphen G. It actually shows up the lines that cause the problem. You can see line number 29 in the main function is causing invalid write. And line number 10 in the print function, or print numbers function, is causing invalid read. So we could do the same. We could use that particular hyphen hyphen db, hyphen attach, equal to s, and run this. Let's go into GDB context. So GDB now is able to show up the first line where invalid write occurred. You could see line number 21, which is the first loop where we are using uh, we are using this loop to write down data into that memory region. But the problem is the size of the loop, the number of iterations. The last iteration is beyond the size allocated. So step further next, you see segmentation fault. So like this file grind is a very effective, very effective tool. Let's look at one more while grind usage. It's dumping core file, let's say no. Okay. Look at this, I've got one application called chail.c. Well, this is a program using fourth function to start a new chail process. In the chail process code, we are using the EXCC and then trying to replace this chail with a new executable. The executable should be passed as an input to this particular EXCCL. So let's run this. Let's have hyphen G support chain dot C hyphen O chain compiled. Let's run chain and pass the print application that we have earlier built. We have built the print application. We'll pass that print application as an argument to this particular chain. So now 
you could see here allocating 400 bytes because tail process got created and tail process will be exceeded or replaced with the print num and print num is passed with an argument 100 so the same application and no errors reported. As we have done already, we'll run this with while grind now. You can see here while grind, while grind here is not showing up the problem that it showed up earlier. So you can see here it is showing up the PID 4834 and 4834 is the PID of the primary application, the first parent application. So while grind is by default not setting into chain process and reporting the box of chain process. This particular PID is of the parent, and so that particular bug which happened in the EXCC program is not being shown up, and EXCC program is running in the chain context. There is a flag that Valgrind well supports called track underscore track hyphen chain. Let's use that. Let's say hyphen hyphen track hyphen chain equal to S. Lots of options in bulk grind. It is trace hyphen children, so we'll take this. We'll grind hyphen hyphen trace hyphen children equal to yes. So now you can see the parent process ID is 4905. Child process was created and then immediately while grind is now tracing into child which is 4908. And 4908 happens to do an EXCC of the same program that we have just seen, the print program. That's two loops, one causing an overrun, the other one causing an underrun. And you can see uh, there is the same program running and the same error being reported. So like this, you could step into chain processes using the flag called hyphen hyphen trace hyphen children.